Christine Morris. I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer, and I will be showing you first glance at Altium Designer 14. The release was just brought out about a month ago, and we will see all the items that are key features within the Altium Designer 14 software. You'll notice here on my screen I have the extensions and updates window or dialog and it shows all the software extensions that have now been available to the user um, as third-party tools and you'll notice here uh, there is the Aldex simulator pre-compiled pre library for Lattice uh, the Aldex active HDL simulator as well as a pre-compiled library for MicroSemi and Xilinx and Elatera all of these are software extensions of the Altium Designer tool and can be accessed through Altium Designer externally to those applications. Up until now, Altium Designer has been contained, self-contained with all of the items that you may need. But due to the variety of designs being created, these extensions are given an avenue that previously did not exist for customers to go ahead and do that extended testing of their designs. Not only that, they have included support for rigid flex design in the Altium Designer tools as well. Uh, you can see under the Design Layer Stack Manager, this dialog has changed quite a bit. It's more in a tabular format. If you're familiar with the previous versions of Altium Designer, they would have included just a layer stack up and by clicking on one of those layers, you could add all the information as you see in this tabular form um, to that layer stack up. In this case, now we have not only the stack up on the left-hand side, but you can see we have our layer name, the types of layers that can be actually created with that, the materials that would exist, a thickness, the dielectric materials, the dielectric constants, a pullback if it was needed, and the orientation of that specific layer as well. Not only that, we always have had our presets. Those are included. You, if you have a layer stack that you have used previously and want to load, you can most certainly load that into Altium Designer as well. And you can see down below, we have the, the actual stack up. And if I wanted to add additional stacks, I could click the Add Stack button, and it would ensure that another one is added very easily. I can define that and give it a new name over here on the right hand side and determine whether that is flex or rigid. Um, at that time then of course you would need if you are going to add flex design to, the, to your rigid PCB it would need to meet at a mid layer um, to one of the layers on your rigid board that is already defined so to make sure that that is possible to be fabricated. And if you're needing to go ahead and copy this layer stack up, you can use the copy command and paste and put that into any documentation that you might need as well. So you have the capability of customizing each of these stack ups as needed for each of your particular designs. And all of these dialog boxes are basically a hyperlink so I can type within those and go ahead and change any of the information needed. Not only that, with the flex design as you see here, we have under our view planning mode, once you have that layer stack up defined, then you can define the actual outlines of the PCB and rigid areas. In this case, I can, if I double click on the area that is in the upper portion, you'll notice that the board region has layer stack region two, and it is a rigid, uh, rigid area. You can also see here that there is a flex region as well, and that one is named Layer Stack Region 3. And in that stack, you can see that that is just an option set to flex. Once I cancel, you have the three different portions of this PCB as they would be defined for the fabrication house. And that is in our view menu, board planning, or the one key on your keyboard. We also have the 2D layout. Traditionally, this has always been the same as you would normally see um, with the differentiations and all the layers um, across the bottom of the editor as normal. And we also have the 3D mode. As you become more familiar with Altium Designer and their enhancements, the 3D portion of the tool is a large part that they are keeping consistent 
with any new features that are coming in. And here you'll see this is basically the 3D visualization of this particular uh, project. And it has the components already stepped on it. Not only that, there is the PCB panel that allows you control and view that in 3D even more closely. For example, if I go ahead and click on this, this flex layer stack and then look at the layer stack region, you'll notice it has options to include bending lines. And these bending lines have a bending angle, a radius, an affected area um, of where that is going to take place for that, that bend line, so it has enough room to actually do the bend, and then a fold index as well. So when you add those bending lines, and you can see I have several of those placed here in this particular example, once I have those in place, then I can go ahead and use this fold state, and I can then go ahead and see that wrap right around for that rigid design. And imagine if you're going out to fabrication. Isn't this a nice view of being able to visualize that prior to going to fabrication and then realizing that, you know, there might be some issues there. I want, it would be nice if I could see those. Well, within the PCB editor and using the flex capabilities, you now can see that rigid flex design in 3D and the actual end product as if it were to be fabricated. So that is another great feature that's been added within the Altium Designer tools. This fold state then, if I want to go ahead and just bring it back out to its initial um, view, I can do so also. The next item I want to speak to is support for the embedded components. You'll notice here, this is basically in 3D. I'm just going to go back to my 2D mode for a moment, and I'm going to open up the Bluetooth Sentinel PCB library. And upon doing so, you'll notice when I click on the library, Altium has support now for embedded passives to be put onto the PCB. I am going to go ahead, and with this capacitor, I'm going to place a solid region to encompass a body that will be extruded within that cavity. And let me just show you, if I do place fill, and I go ahead and I'm going to make this fill a little bit larger than the actual physical area, And just let me go ahead and complete this. And once I've ended that command, we can also elongate this. I wanted to make it a little bit longer. So let me just do so with that fill. And I may just go ahead and, and redraw that. Let me just redraw that momentarily. So I'm going to just place this fill. And it's going to be a little bit larger than that, that actual passive component. Once I've done that, I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to double click on this fill area. With that, you'll notice that there is a cavity definition defined here. And it's just another option within the properties of that fill region. Not only that, I'm going to have it placed on my mechanical one layer and I'm going to give it a height of two mils. Upon doing so, then I can go ahead, and if I cancel out of here, what we'll do is we will place this on my PCB board by doing a right click and place. And once I've done this, I can zoom into the area, and I'll probably want to use my tab key to show the properties. I want to put this on my min layer too. So one of the things I need to be concerned with is most certainly that I have enough area to place that in between the stacks. And here I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to place that here and momentarily then we will be able to cancel out of that command and see that individual placement of that component. And notice here in the mid layer too, and it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that shell 
or that outline of that actual cavity that has been placed. And at that point in time, it does show as an extruded shape there, and I can visually see that in 3D as well. So you can imagine the possibilities that will be able to be included within your uh, designs now with the embedded components and being able to place those on your rigid design uh, that you have already created in Altium Designer. Not only that, we also have the new importer support. And if I go in and for File Import Wizard, you'll notice that there's a new option in the Import Wizard. And it is now the Eagle Projects and Design. We have the capability of importing not only schematic, board, but library files from Eagle Design Projects. In the past, this has been traditionally done by a script. And you've had a little bit of cleanup to do with that. Now with this Eagle Projects and Design Importer, it does it for you and will translate those designs. So that minimizes that cleanup that you will have to do once it is translated. Not only that, we also have in the Altium Designer 14, we have, and I'm just going to go back to the 2D mode so I can actually go into the command for a moment. Let me just switch back here. In 2D mode, we also have the options of the via stitching and defining a specific area. Up until now, this via stitching has been part of the tool, but you haven't been able to actually create an area. Right away I enable this constrained area, it will ask me to draw that, that area on my PCB of where I want that via uh, stitching to remain. In the past, if you are familiar with the via stitching, it's, it was a little hard to actually define where that placement would be for those vias. Now this capability makes that much easier for you. And you can see all the same parameters still exist in all the other areas, you know, your clearances, um, your via styles, as well as the, the start and end layer for those. And then, of course, your solder mask expansion rules. So all of that remains the same. The only thing new that's been added is this constrained area allowing you for easier placement of those vias for stitching. Not only that, for those of you that are familiar with our Altium um, Content Vault, and I'm just going to go here for a moment, you'll notice here now in the Altium Content Vault that they have supplied us a new option to add information to a content cart. As you can imagine, for those of you that are using the vaults, this has become a very big portion of the Altium Designer design tools. It allows you not only to create your design project, but you can put it into the vault, either a personal vault or an Altium vault, um, which is a separate application, and allow others to access that content or design content. With this new capability, because if I go ahead and add this, this component now is added to a cart, and you may have used like our supplier search links in the past, and you might be aware that you can look at the cost and lead times and everything from our supplier links. Well, now you can put this in a content vault for this particular component. So you can only imagine what will come next, possibly, that it might have the ability of actually put it into a shopping cart, uh, maybe one of the suppliers that Altium has partnered with. But at this point in time, it at least allows you to get it from the Altium content vault into your own personal or Altium vault. Um, itself and so that allows you to reuse that item share it use it and in, in whatever fashion you may and have it consistently be within the tools as well so you don't have to constantly come into the content vault and download it or place it you would have it available in your specific vault for ease of use and just to let you know um, with the vaults, in order to see that Altium Content Vault, if you're not familiar, you would do that through the DXP Preferences, Data Management Folder, and Altium Content Vault. If you haven't enabled it, it's grayed out here on my screen, but you'll see the Add Content Vault, and that will allow you then essentially to link to any of that 
library data that Altium has delivered to the user base. You click and apply and OK in this field and then you would have immediate access to those vaults and all the different manufacturers that Altium has supplied components for. In addition to that, there is also improvements to the differential pair uh, routing. Um, it's more automated with guided widths and gap changes um, to allow for consistent odd mode impedance while maintaining ease of use and productivity. So if you're familiar with those and the design rules for the differential pair, they've just made a few enhancements to make those capabilities even better. Uh, and the very last thing I think I have to talk about is support for um, relief and life cycle change notes. So provided you are using the vaults, and I know many of you may not have embarked on that capability yet, we now can um, to have an audit trail for enhancements and designers can add notes to the vault items during that release or change of life cycle state which makes that very key for the end users to be able to identify that. And that data management, again, is, is only um, consistent within that vault area um, for support of those release and lifecycle change nodes. We also have that centralized environment um, configuration management. Um, for those of you that aren't using vaults, that's another area to just ensure that you have consistent templates and schematic drawing styles and producing out files according to company standards. Um, so those capabilities have built, been built into the Altium Designer 14 tools as well. So those are the high level features, um, probably some of the more important ones that have been added to the Altium Designer 14. It is important to note um, for those of you that um, may not be as familiar with the vaults. There's a lot of information on the Altium uh, website about vaults, how you're going to store your data in them, how you'll set up that configuration management. There are also uh, training classes available um, to allow you to use those. So if you're unfamiliar with how the vaults work within Altium Designer, I encourage you to look at not only the documentation, but inquire also about trainings. Um, we most certainly can help you get on board with all of those newer items within the tools. And you can imagine with where uh, technology is going with all these advancements, uh, that is just one more piece to allow you to get that data, especially for your design data and your supplier link data and um, manufacturing data out to the individuals much quicker um, from right within the Altium Designer tools. That's all I have as far as the webinar, but um, I will most certainly be sure to answer any questions that may be asked along the way and, and we'll make this webinar available for viewing as well. Um, so thank you for joining the first glance at Altium Designer 14 webinar. Mm -hmm.